Thursday students who come from many different backgrounds. We have different nationalities, family histories, skin colors, religions, lifestyles, languages, and genders. At some level, we all face obstacles and hurdles to our education. We believe that the university campus should be an open and safe place for the entire community to participate in post-secondary education. Dignity, respect, and civility lay the foundation for a safe and inclusive campus upon which tolerance must be built. The university aspires to be a diverse, welcoming, and accessible institution. However, what we have discovered through our own experience is that many people face discrimination and violence on campus. We are using the tools we have been given as students to inquire about the lack of equity that students and other community members experience daily. As a result of the violence we have experienced and witnessed on campus, we demand personal, public, and institutional accountability to address the issues of ambient violence on campus. We don't believe this can be called graffiti. Graffiti can be an art form and accepted form of self-expression. What we found was violence. Ambient violence exists on our campus every day in the forms of these hate writings. This type of violence can be described as omnipresent, everyday occurrences that are heard as a whisper to some and a loud roar to others. Ambient violence exists as a constant background sound, a white noise in everyday life. When I first saw the image was after people noticed when after the the image was the problem was raised. So I didn't notice until people talked about it. I saw the image first week of class but I didn't do anything or I didn't say anything because I've heard I've constantly heard that kind of hateful language on campus among Asian international students, so I wasn't surprised. We are Japanese and of course like we have some reactions to that and which is um, the daily base like we encounter with other um, Asian international students hating Japanese because of um, historical reasons and also like Japanese um, international students commenting on other Asian nations for historical reasons as well or political reasons. We don't have anywhere to take this um, issue because um, the, <laughs> the way we feel is that like the university represent international student as a whole like a one unit. like. Yes, like we have um, international population and then we are a diverse, um, multicultural, welcoming university. But in fact, like what we experience in daily life is the, the um, hate crime in our classroom. What was the ethical thing for me to do? Should I report it or should I just let it go? And it was a really hard decision. To, to make because I didn't want to yet again um, bring this incident to uh, public attention and to be um, accused of being the race lady. That is, oh there's that lady that keeps talking about race, that keeps seeing racism everywhere. And I also did not want to have to take on the burden of, of uh, raising the issue and then dealing with the consequences of, of all of that on my own. But Ethically, I had no choice. I had to bring it to the attention of um, people, but I wanted people's support too. So I sent a memo out to just a few people to say that this is what I'm dealing with right now. Um, you know, the stu some students, Japanese students in the classroom are, are immediately affected. The students are really upset, angry, frustrated, confused, and I myself are feeling that, you know, Yet again, I have to deal with it. So after the Japs Go Home image was pointed out in the class by some of the um, by some of my classmates, um, I realized that I hadn't seen the image until it had been pointed out to me, and um, I felt ashamed and embarrassed of myself that this image had affected people in our classroom, and I didn't even know it was there. 
um, I decided to go out and look around campus for other images like that, either racist, sexist, or homophobic. And so I ventured around campus and I couldn't find anything. And I came back and I knew that these images did exist because it was probably very unlikely that you know, the one image in our classroom was an anomaly. Some people from my class had sent me images on, over email, and so I opened some of their images, and I felt really embarrassed when I opened these files and saw, you know, very graphic, phallic, racist images staring back at me. Um, I quickly closed the program because I didn't want other people on the computer lab to see what I was looking at. But then I realized that these images were found on campus and them seeing them on my computer, you know, really made no difference when they could see them just generally walking around campus anyways. And so what I was looking at or working with was, was something that already existed. While taking pictures around campus, I found many racist, misogynist, and homophobic images and messages. Interestingly enough, the majority of images I photographed were in the campus library, a very communal and common space on campus. I found swastikas and hateful and hurtful messages on desks, cubicle walls, and in the washrooms. And one experience in particular really stands out for me. I was in the men's basement washroom in the library with my boyfriend, and we were looking at racist messages with swastikas written around them on the stall door. And we simply stood there silently and took them in. It was an extremely awkward and uncomfortable moment for me, and I'm sure for him too, and I think because I actually felt quite guilty without even really having to write these messages there. By simply looking at them and giving them such blatant attention, I felt like I was contributing in some way to this racism. Since we started this project, we've presented our findings to numerous equity groups and diversity forums. These presentations have generated dialogue and have had beneficial outcomes. Facilities Management now has a program in place to document hate writings. In the four months since the implementation of this program, 10 complaints have been recorded compared with seven in the previous 12 months. Numerous equity groups have taken up the issue and as a community, we continue to promote awareness and the development of solutions at the individual level and the insti institutional level. Through this work, we have uncovered differential but mutually harmful effects that ambient violence has on an increasingly diverse population of students. As the university moves towards a global arena, it is essential that the complexities of internationalization be recognized. Individually and collectively, we have the ability to respond to ambient violence in our communities. The ability for us to respond to this violence makes us all responsible.